What's up guys, how's it going? Today I want to make a quick video about the very beginning of an interview process, which is really just your resume. And so the reason why I wanted to make a video on this is because a lot of you guys probably already know, but I recently started a job as a software development engineer at Amazon. And as always, my goal on this channel is to help you guys land jobs um, and really to get to where you want to be in tech. And so I realized that the first step is sort of, uh, you know, creating a resume, right? And having a good resume to send to different jobs and different recruiters um, so that hopefully you can get your foot in the door and actually get interviews at these different companies. So with that being said, today I want to talk about the resume that I use to get into Amazon and hopefully you guys can pick up some tips and tricks and modify your resume for it. Alright, so before we actually get into our video, I want to take a quick minute to just thank our sponsor for today's video, Classbird. So for those of you who are not aware, Classbird is actually not a course provider, but an aggregator and a course comparison website. Classbird's mission is to organize and facilitate global access to online courses, and as of right now, they actually have over 280,000 different courses that you could search the world for. If you go to their site, classbird.com, you guys can search directly through the search bar or the navigation by topics and categories to find the class that you guys might want to take. They also offer free courses on a variety of different topics in addition to different paid courses as well. They also offer online courses from some of the best universities such as Harvard, Stanford, MIT. So if you guys want to check out Classbird, there will be a link in the description that you guys can use. And again, free classes, paid classes, almost 300,000 different classes you guys can search from. So I definitely recommend checking out Classbird. So I think the first thing that actually is important to address is like, why is your resume important, right? And so your resume is important for a lot of different reasons, but very, very succinctly, it's important because one, you need to convince someone that you're worth talking to, right? So you need to put forth some sort of information in a very succinct way that can let them know, hey, it's worth talking to Kevin, right? And then two, I think it's important because you need to actually document all the different things that you've done in the past, all the different jobs that you've worked and the impact that you've had at them. And so it's important to be able to do that in a very concise manner, in a very easily digestible manner, because a lot of recruiters will actually only look at your resume for 30 to 45 seconds before they decide, okay, Kevin should get an interview and talk to someone, or, you know, we'll pass on Kevin, maybe he'll come back later. So you really want to make sure you put your best foot forward. So that being said, I'm going to give you guys my tips and tricks and my advice on what you should and shouldn't do on your resume to hopefully actually get you into the pile that does get an interview. Okay, so here's the top of my resume, and I kind of want to just go block by block so that you guys can focus on each of the different sections that I'm talking about. But the first thing that you want to have really is just your name. So you want to put your name just at the top, probably in bold, take a lot of space, and have some sort of nice header that will just give them who you are and how they can sort of reach you, right? So as you can tell, I have my name, Kevin D. Naughton Jr., at the very top in giant letters and bold. Um, and then on the right side, I actually just have things like what would be my phone number, my email, um, you know, my, my GitHub profile, as well as my personal website. And so fun fact, I actually forgot at some point to take off my, my phone number on my resume, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that. I think that you can or can't put your phone number. It's kind of up to you, but I really should not have put it. Uh, probably about like a year ago now, I, I used to have my resume, I think, on my personal website, or I had a copy of my resume on my personal website that actually had my real phone number. And that was really bad. So I actually had some random person call me when I was in the middle of a workout, and they're like, hey, Kevin, can you help me with my algorithm homework? And I was like, who are you? Um, so that was really weird. I, I don't necessarily recommend putting your phone number on your resume anymore, but if you guys want to, uh, you can leave it there. But if not, I feel like, you know, someone can email you, and that's totally fine as well. So first thing is first is just giving them your information, making sure that they know who you are, and giving them the information so they can actually reach you and communicate further details if they need to. So that's it really for the top section. That's just going to tell you who I am and how you can reach me. My next section here that I have is actually just my education. So not everyone goes to school, and that's totally fine. You guys don't need to go to college necessarily. Uh, there are tons of people who go to boot camps and don't study computer science in college or go to college at all, and that's great, right? And they're still great engineers. So if you guys have college and you want to put it there, if you have a boot camp that you went to, great. If you're self-taught, great. Your resume is really going to tell them everything that they need to know about you, and I feel that education is kind of becoming less and less important, uh, it seems, in, in this field at least for uh, you know software engineering. But nonetheless, I have my education here, New York University, which was in New York, New York, right? So I went to school in, in Manhattan, um, and I graduated in May 2017. If you guys are actually still in school, you guys can say expected May, whatever the year is, or expected December, or whenever you're going to graduate, presumably. And then you can kind of just say the degree you got. So I said Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science, and then I put my GPA 3.30. Is that my real GPA? You guys may never know. 
So now the next section I have here is just my technical skills. And the reason why I like putting these here is it's just gonna very quickly tell the recruiter what, what skills I have, right? What languages I know, what operating systems I've used, what different technical tools uh, I have under my belt. And I think that that's valuable because for specific roles, sometimes you have to know, for example, Python, or they want someone who already knows Node because they can't afford someone to like ramp up and learn that technology. And so for some roles, if you don't know certain technologies, you actually might just get booted, right? So I think it's good to sort of just right up front, let them know here are the technologies or the frameworks, et cetera, that I know. And hopefully that sort of fits the bill for the role. So I put my programming language and what I also recommend doing is actually ordering them in the order of proficiency. So I would say that I'm best at Java and then Python and then JavaScript, for example, PHP, C, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how I would recommend structuring your resume. And again, it's you putting that best foot forward saying, Java is the thing I feel most comfortable with, then Python, then JavaScript, et cetera. Operating systems, I feel like everyone's probably gonna have these same things, but again, it's kind of good to just put it on there and let people know that, at least that's my opinion. And then other technical tools, I think everyone's probably gonna know how to use version control. You can talk about if you've used AWS or know how to use AWS, Redis, Elasticsearch, Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator. Those are just some of the tools that I've kind of thrown on here. Um, and again, it's probably worth mentioning too that a lot of this data is or information on, on this resume at least is sort of anonymized just so that it's like a clean slate. It's not really totally reflective of what I've done. And it's just an example of sort of like how to structure your resume, right? You guys are gonna have to fill in a lot of these actual blanks. So now this is where the professional experience comes in, right? So boom, professional experience is the next header on my resume. So as you can tell, you know, I have the company that I worked at, where the company is located. So here I just put tech company, obviously said it's located in New York, New York. And then on the right side of my resume, I actually just have the date. So you could say I worked here from March, 2020 to the present, right? And so that sort of just tells you I worked here um, as well as like, this is what I did, right? So I was a backend developer and I worked there from here to here. Um, and if it wasn't the present, as we'll see in other experiences down the line, you would just say your ending date. So now this is where the real meat of the resume is, in my opinion. This is where you really have to make yourself shine and show recruiters why what you did was important, right? So a couple different general notes, I would say. One, this is just my own opinion, but I personally like using square bullets. I think they look more professional than circular bullets, but you know that's all up to your own opinion. I don't think it really matters. I don't think it's gonna make or break you getting or not getting the interview. But what really matters is the actual Im information that you put in each of these bullets, right? So here, for example, I said, develop project to expire old referrals, saving the company $500,000 per year. Um, is this exactly what I did? Not necessarily, but this is what you kind of want to show, right? So if you could say you led a project, uh, if you said you increase something by a certain number. If you said you, you save a certain amount of money, that's the kind of details that you want to put in there, right? So here I'm saying I saved the company $500,000 per year by basically expiring old referrals. Um, and that's, that's important, right? You want to show people and recruiters specifically the impact that you had at these, these, these different companies because you're saying, hey, I could save your company half a million dollars a year as well. Um, here, then I say pro uh, develop project allowing users to refer other users and receive fractional shares of the mystery stock. Again, that's them. That's probably a little bit softer, right? I'm not saying I led a certain project. I'm not saying the exact impact that the project had. I'm not saying why it was important to the company. So you could probably shape this up a little bit more. Um, as you'll notice too, throughout these bullet points, I'm using past tense, right? I'm saying things that I have done, uh, things that I have delivered, things that are finished, things that are completed. And that's probably important too. I think that you wanna make sure that your whole entire resume as a whole is consistent, right? So you'll also notice that I actually don't have any periods at the end of these sentences. Whether or not you agree with that being grammatically correct is one thing, but I think consistency is really what's important, right? So if you're gonna have a period after one line, have a period after every single line, after every single bullet on your resume, don't have it misconstrued, right? Don't have in one section periods and other section no periods, that really just looks kind of sloppy. So that's sort of this first experience here. And as you'll see, uh, I have a couple other ones here. And you guys can kind of read through this, but you'll get the gist, right? So I have another tech company. It was in New York, New York. If you guys are actually, like before, I would actually have where in New York it was, but again, I'm sort of anonymizing that just because. So maybe I was in downtown, maybe I was in Midtown, maybe I was in Chelsea or Soho or wherever. So you guys can kind of uh, add the actual city or, or more specific location on your resume as well. Jumping over to the right side again, you'll see that this is a past experience, right? So you can actually see now that this was from July 2018 to February 2020, for example. Um, and again, I'm going to talk about the different things that I did at that job, right? So here I'm using stronger language. I led backend development of some project. This is what the project was. Here's a big number that was important. 
Um, and this is a little bit about the different technologies that I use to make that project happen, right? Elasticsearch, Java, Cron. And again, I'm trying to very succinctly tell the recruiter, this is what I did, this is the impact I had, this is why it was important, right? Or even here, right, if there's a specific job description that wants me to have experience with Elasticsearch, this is money, right? This is great, this is gold. Um, here again, I'm saying I led the backend development of some other project and increased conversion by 20%. That is important, right? That is saying I had a lot of impact. I increased your bottom line by 20% or conversion on this one screen to the next screen 20% or the checkout conversion, whatever it might have been, right? That's huge. You want to show the impact that you had. Why they should hire you with these companies, right? Why they should bring you in is because of the impact that you've had in the past, right? It's repeatable. You're going to show them I did this here and I could do that at your company as well. So now this one's a little bit different, uh, which is why I'll kind of show it. This is like a little startup company. This is like a real thing that I did. Again, fudge the numbers a little bit, but this is actually something that I did. So I thought it'd be worth putting in because maybe you do something on your own as well, but it's the same sort of deal, right? So you have some startup. Maybe you mentioned the, the website because it's specific to you. Maybe not everyone will know it. Um, and then again, where it was based, blah, 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 the years that you did it. So here I just said create a subscription service. This is what we did for some niche. Uh, we automated the packaging to fulfill a growing number of orders, X number of boxes shipped, right? Showing metrics, showing numbers, showing results, um, a certain amount of revenue. Maybe there's a certain amount of customer retention and then maybe you sell the company or you finish the project uh, or you had some exit strategy, right? So again, it's just very succinctly telling them what you did and why and why it was important, what impact it had. So after your actual professional experience, I personally like to have something that's like hackathons and technical presentations. So here I'm just talking about two different hackathons, or I guess one's a hackathon, one's a technical presentation. So one's like an iOS development app or iOS application that was developed. I talk about my role on it, right? So I was a product manager and then I sort of just talk about the different things that I did on that application, right? So I worked with three different engineers, develop an iOS application. I created the wireframe, uh, different control flows of all the states of the application. And then I actually led the presentation to X, Y, and Z, right? So again, very simply saying what I did, why it mattered and the impact that it had. And again, I think stuff like this too is good to have because it maybe shows your people skills and maybe shows like your technical experience as well if it's a specific hackathon like this one, right? So this is saying that, again, I was a product manager. This was a hackathon. I finished in the top three. Whether or not that's great, who knows? But like, at least I could show I went to a hackathon. I'm passionate about programming. I have technical skills and I placed in the top three people. Not too bad. So again, something I did, designed mock-ups, blah, 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 led a presentation. Again, succinctly showing you what I did, why it mattered. So now I'm going to go down to what is the leader, or sorry, the programming experience section. And again, this is more stuff that I, I, I guess, did on my own time. It wasn't necessarily something that was like set up for me or an event, right? So here I'm talking about an application that I developed with a couple other developers. And again, I sort of was like the PM, I guess, right? I'm developing application states. I, and this was for me way back earlier in college. So this is me really learning the preparation organization processes to transform an idea into a reality. So... Again, at a certain point, you might want to phase out certain things on your resume. For now, I just still have it here. I think it's a good example for you guys, especially if you're earlier in college or you don't have as much experience to talk about. This is really good, right? You want to show them, especially when you're like a freshman, for example, they don't have a lot to go off of other than maybe your grades and then what you sort of tell them, right? Like if you get on the phone with them. So you just want to show them that you're curious. You want to show them that you learn quickly. You want to show them that you're driven um, and that you succeed in the things that you choose to do, right? So probably if they only have Classes to judge you off of, they're going to want you to do well. If, they, if you can only show them the things that you did in your own time to succeed, that's something you should show them, right? Hopefully show them you did well and why. Uh, so again, this is like another thing that I did in my own time, right? Uh, I this is a real thing, but I created an interviews repository. Same sort of thing as my channel. I had no idea what I was doing. I decided, okay, let me just document some stuff that I, about data structures to try and help people learn. Let me document some stuff about like different technical solutions and things. And so... It actually ended up getting some traction, which is pretty cool, and it's like one of the most popular Java repositories right now. I think I'm about to hit 50,000 stars and like a certain amount of forks, which is awesome. But again, I'm just showing people I do this in my spare time. I'm passionate about this, and this is something I did and it had you know some sort of impact, which is cool. Uh, the final thing here is just leadership experience. I think it's not necessarily essential to have, but if you have space on your resume and you could put it, awesome, go for it, right? So again, it's not going to hurt you. So I could say, okay, I was in this fraternity. I was vice president from these years. I was on some sort of council at NYU. I was the executive vice president. I was a VP of service and philanthropy. And again, I'm just showing you examples of different things you could put on there. And as well, you're going to have the years. 
And that just, I think, leaves a good taste in people's mouth, right? If you can show that you have technical skills, if you can show that you have people skills, if you can show that you have assumed leadership positions, hopefully that's going to be a pretty good candidate, especially if they don't have that much to show at the beginning, right? When you're like a freshman or you don't have that much work experience under your belt in general. So that's sort of my resume at a high level that I just want to show you guys. Now I can sort of just zoom out and show you as a whole. Um, but this is kind of my advice. And I feel like the one thing that I would say uh, – as just general advice is like really, really, really keep your resume to one page. No one wants to read more than a one page resume. Uh, it can be pretty painful if you have a longer resume. And I think a lot of times people just sort of have the rule like if it's longer than one page, it's out the door. So again, resumes are really important. Show the impact that you've had at previous companies. Show why you're going to bring that different impact that you had at those previous companies to the company that you're hopefully going to be going to. Um, and make sure that it reads well, right? A good, a good little test you can do is give your resume to someone and see if they can get the gist of who you are and what you've done in 30 to 45 seconds, right? Because that might be the only amount of time you have with a recruiter. So guys, that's my resume. That's the resume that actually ended up getting me a job at Amazon as a software development engineer. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you guys have any questions, be sure to reach out on Twitter or Instagram at Kevin Naughton Jr. If you guys enjoyed this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And if you guys need help with any of your technical interviews, be sure to check out the dailybike.dev. We are running a 50% off promotion right now until the end of the year. And that's gonna get you all set and squared away for your technical interviews with any companies of any size. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't, and I will catch you guys next time.